Hello and thank you for joining us on Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. I'm Naja Atutijani and we begin with news of diplomatic relations. President Muhammad Buhari has stressed the urgent need for broader multilateral action towards overcoming climate change, biodiversity, rising levels of pollution and waste, which he describes as a major crisis threatening the planet. This was while addressing a special session commemorating the 50th anniversary of the United Nations Environment Programme, UNEP, in Nairobi, Kenya. State House correspondent Adam Musambu reports that the hybrid event is focusing on strengthening UNEP for the implementation of the environmental dimension of the 2030 Agenda for Suitable Development. For five decades, the United Nations Environment Program has used science in the execution of its mandate of bringing the world together and helping nations find solutions to great environmental threats. The UNEP at 50 celebration is therefore a time to reflect on the past, envision the future, bolster international cooperation and stimulate collective action towards addressing climate crisis and make the environment safer healthier and better. Let humanity to understand that we must transform our societies and economies to protect the earth, our only home, so that it can sustain us. In all we do, we need to follow science and engage in multilateral action to make peace with nature, to ensure these and future generations can live on a sustainable planet. Let us therefore commit to support UNEP, to steer the environmental discussions towards tangible and sustainable solutions. Unchecked climate change will pose unacceptable risks to our security, our economies, and indeed our planet. President Muhammad Buhari expressed Nigeria's appreciation to UNEP for its role in reducing biodiversity loss and for being a major player in the global movement to slow down deforestation and accelerate afforestation. We recognize that restoring key ecosystems is crucial to help combat climate change and achieve sustainable development. Therefore, by collaborating with partners such as the United Nations Environment Programme, we believe that much more success would be recorded in, in collective struggle against climate change. He, however, said global efforts are adapting to climate impacts, notwithstanding nations are constantly facing the threats of disrupted weather patterns, low food production, and rising sea levels that increase the risk of catastrophic flooding, amongst other challenges. In that regard, Nigeria pledged to work with other countries in achieving the goals of the Paris Agreement and in doing so has increased her conditional contribution to reduce greenhouse gas from 45% to 47%. Additionally, I outlined Nigeria's efforts and commitments to net zero emission, which involve both environment and development related plans. The plans, he explained, contained a number of nature-based solutions, including creating 10 additional national parks, two marine protected areas, as well as sustainable management of critical wetlands ecosystem across the country. Established with one goal in mind, uniting the world in saving the planet, the United Nations Environment Program has a strong view that the global community cannot continue to pollute its way to development in the name of progress. Concerted efforts, it says, must be made towards building the future we want. From Nairobi, Kenya, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Still on climate change and diplomacy, the federal ministries of environment, water resources, as well as agriculture and rural development have been directed to collaborate, collaborate rather, more effectively towards controlling and combating desertification in the country. President Mohammed Buhari gave the directive while granting audience to the executive secretary of the United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification on the margins of the UNEP 50 celebration in Nairobi, Kenya. Now the report will come in our subsequent bulletin. And still on environmental matters with the theme recovering key species for ecosystem restoration 
World Wildlife Day 2022 is commemorated to draw attention to the urgency of action needed to protect natural ecosystems and biodiversity. Onangye Fine Face reports. World Wildlife Day is an opportunity to celebrate the many beautiful and varied forms of wild fauna and flora and to raise awareness of the multitude of benefits that their conservation provides to people. At the same time, the day reminds us of the urgent need to step up the fight against wildlife crime and human-induced reduction of species, which have wide-range economic, environmental and social impacts. Let's commit to address the many threats facing wildlife. Let's make better use of land and sea so we don't erode the wild spaces even further. Let's tackle climate change and pollution, both of which are a threat to all life on the planet. Let's use natural resources sustainable so that wildlife and the spaces they inhabit truly thrive. World Wildlife Day this year draws attention to the critical role that keystone species, many of which are threatened or endangered, play in ensuring ecosystem health. The continued loss of wild plants and animal species poses an existential threat to people and the planet. Wildlife extinction threatens the vibrant and diverse ecosystems on Earth upon which we all depend. We understand the damage we are doing to wildlife. We understand how this damage affects our present and future. And we know what we need to do to reverse course. Let's do it. The crux of the matter is for all of humanity to commit to preserving our invaluable and irreplaceable wildlife for the benefit and the light of current and future generations. I'm Onegye Fineface. Thank you, Onengye. Now joining us via Zoom to provide more perspective to the 2022 World Wildlife Day is a renowned conservationist who has done a lot of research on wildlife in the person of Professor Enyang Edem. It's a pleasure to have you join us via Zoom, sir. Can you hear me clearly, Professor? Perhaps you need to unmute your mic. Professor, can you hear me? You need to unmute your mic so that we can all hear you. He has done that. He has done that. Good afternoon, madam. Good afternoon, viewers. It's my pleasure to join you on the program. Thank you, Professor. Now, the focus of this year's World Wildlife Day is to recover key species for ecosystem restoration. What are the species which are endangered, which species rather are endangered, threatened, or nearing extinction and require recovery in Nigeria? Oh, this is a wonderful question. Thank you. I want to say that if there is any country that has been so blessed with species of global importance, Nigeria ranks the first 10 in Africa. Nigeria is rich in varied endangered species such as the Cross River Gorilla. It's here in Nigeria, in Cross River State. We have the Nigerian Cameroon chimpanzee. We have the Atlantic dolphin. We have up to five different endangered species of turtles in the ocean. We have the freshwater turtles that are endangered. We have the land tortoises that are endangered. We have the Niger Delta red colobus. We have the uh, Bruce's red colobus in Cross River. We have the white-throated monkey in Okomu, and those states, that's monkey in Akwaibom, and uh, Imo state, as well as in Apukweze. Now, we what have, would... What... Across the country, so many species, including reptiles, crocodiles, uh, snakes, and so on. Now, what would happen if these species were not saved, so to speak, what sort of imbalance would there be in the ecosystem? And what kind of opportunity would it present for us as individuals to, to correct this imbalance? Honestly speaking, 
a basic species like the Nigerian uh, uh, cross river gorilla, the chimpanzee, the drill monkey, one very basic role they play. They help to restore our forest and forest ecosystems. How does it work? There are many Nigerian tropical tree species in our forest that their seeds can never germinate and grow a new tree, except they pass through the guts or alimentary system of these animals. And so if for any reason these animals were not there to eat and swallow the seeds of these trees or plants and excrete them to allow them to germinate naturally, those trees would disappear from our ecosystem and they, we've lost those species. But guess what? Those same species are the species, some of them provide us food, some of them provide us medicine, some of them provide the materials that help to replenish the soil and then they help to ameliorate the microclimate of our environment, helping to solve the problem of climate change and global warming. Even the water system in our watershed, without those trees, the streams will dry up. In the, the life of these animals are interwoven with our everyday survival. Without them, our life is in conflict. So thank you very much, Professor. I'd like to say I want to believe the zebra gecko, which was named after you, Hemidactylus eniangi, is also one of such creatures. Thank you very much, Professor. I, thank you very much. It's one of those species. Yes. They, 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 they live on the back of the big trees. If the big trees are no longer there, they are gone. Thank you, Professor. We would love to join you again some other time to know more about this. Now, Pleasure. 41 countries in the United Nations General Assembly have unanimously voted to reprimand Russia for invading the Ukraine, uh, demanding that Moscow stop fighting and withdraw its military forces. The resolution, aimed at diplomatically isolating Russia from the world body, was passed during an emergency session called by the UN Security Council. Musa Aliu reports. I call upon all responsible member states. It was an emergency security council meeting summoned by the Secretary General of the United Nations under a meeting for peace resolution in which global threats are referred to. The draft resolution is one of the building blocks to build a wall to stop it. The resolution condemned the actions of Russia over Ukraine and called for the immediate withdrawal of its forces. Facing the total resistance of the Ukrainian population, Putin's regime has proceeded to widespread use of indiscriminate weapons such as multiple rocket launchers and aerial bombs against the residential areas. The voting has been completed. Please 191 of the 193 member states voted for the resolution. 35 abstained and 5 voted against. The, the countries that voted in support of Moscow were Belarus, North Korea, Eritrea and Syria, Cuba and Nicaragua joined China in abstaining. Urging the Russian permanent representative Vasily Mbezia repeated Moscow claims this that it forces we are not targeting pressure. civilian areas. He attributed the lopsided nature of the vote to behind the scenes cohesion from Ukraine allies. This document will not allow us to end. Analysts are of the view that the General Assembly the resolutions are non-binding. However, they carry political weight against Russia. The General Assembly has spoken. A Secretary General, it is my duty to stand by this resolution and be guided by its call. The message of the General Assembly is loud and clear and hostilities in Ukraine now, silence the guns now, open the door to dialogue and diplomacy now. The territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine must be respected in line with UN Charter. The Council discussed peace, Putin declared war. U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Linda Thomas-Greenfield told the Assembly that Russia was poised 
to intensify the brutality of its offensive and urged member states to hold Moscow accountable for its violations of international law. It is the first time in 40 years that Security Council has referred a crisis to the Assembly, and only 11 times an emergency session of the United General Assembly has been called since 1950. Musa Ali, NTA News. And still on the effects of the war, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs confirmed Wednesday that the first batch of Nigerians who fled to Poland, Romania, Slovakia and Hungary following the Ukraine-Russian war will arrive Nigeria this Thursday in federal government arranged chartered flights. Foreign Affairs correspondent Usman Aliu now joins us live from the Namdi Azikwe airport to update us on the situation. Usman, what's the situation at the airport right now? Have the Nigerians arrived yet? Well, thank you very much, Najatu. We are anxiously waiting at Namdi Azikwe International Airport to receive the first batch of these evacuees coming from Ukraine. Actually, they are not coming straight from Ukraine. You know, they are stranded in other countries neighboring Ukraine. So any moment from now as the plan is we are receiving the first batch and according to the plans three flights are expected to arrive namdi azikwe international airport abuja today so we are anxiously waiting to see how this comforting step taken by federal government to give relief to these students and their relations in this issue of russia ukraine war you know it's a very nerving it's a nerving to all of us the relations and all of us who has people there in ukraine there are students who has to flee there they were involved in the first journey outside that country in that situation that was a difficult situation for them but thank god the federal government has arranged these concrete plans and the evacuees are expected any moment from now so far no flight from that uh, area has landed evacuating the students but we are anticipating any moment the flight the first batch would land in this airport and we are anxiously waiting as you can see by my side, all of us here are journalists waiting at the reception of the Namdi Azikwe International Airport to receive these people. And I learned that there are officials from the Federal Ministry of Foreign Affairs that are going to receive this first batch to address them. Now, what other arrangements have been made once they arrive? What is the plan once they arrive? I know you know there are so many things about this issue of Russia-Ukraine war. No one will certainly tell you what is exactly going to happen. But honestly speaking, we are telling you that until when they land, we will see how they are going to be treated. Are they going to be taken? You know, all the protocols of uh, COVID-19 so far have been relaxed because of the issue they found themselves. But we are going to see how they are going, where they are going to be taken. Are they going to be uh, released to their relations who are anxiously waiting for them? Or the government is, will keep them to give them another sort of comfortment? That's what we are waiting to see how it is going to be. All right then, Usman, thank you for the update. We'll be expecting more updates once they arrive. And now we'll be joining our Lagos Network Center for more updates from that zone where Adiola is standing by. It's over to you now, Adiola. Thank you, Najatu. The Nigeria Customs Service is not considering reversing its valuation system to the old manual method, but has promised to modify the e-valuation platform in order to solve the disparity surrounding the payment of duties. This was the fallout of a meeting with freight forwarders in the quest to finding solutions to the issue which has led to the withdrawal of services by clearing agents and freight forwarders. Mike reports. When freight forwarders and clearing agents championed the call for the digitization of duty payment platform, the major goal was to eliminate bottlenecks to trade facilitation. The process is on, but not with the expected results, 
as issues surrounding valuation conflict has overshadowed the once noble initiative. If they have thought about the effect it will have to the people, they will not do it. Now look at it. The port is uh, the climate that are not working. The car business is standard, and uh, to whose interest? This meeting is the first genuine effort by the national headquarters of the customs service to address the issue. And discussions here gave little hope of returning to the manual process, but with modification. When we have all these trainings, they don't attend, they leave it to the boys and the office. So we're going to now um, do it zone by zone to sensitize them and educate them properly on the civil valuation method and other introductions going forward from now. Another area of concern to freight forwarders is payment of demurrage incurred as a result of the development and a request of 90 days to clear the backlog of cargoes the customs said will be carefully examined. They should go back, follow the normal system of custom operation internationally because we are signed to so many treaties. The backup system of six digit of valuation that they said they ought to be using does not go along with what we are saying. What we are saying is a standard value. There seems to be light at the end of the tunnel as this interface will enable both parties to take a postmortem of issues at stake. In Lagos, Michael Alale. News. More than 17,000 farmers and various agricultural value chains have benefited from the World Bank assisted agro processing, productivity enhancement, and livelihood improvement support project appeals in Lagos. Musa Toliat reports that the State Coordination Office of the Agricultural Projects disclosed this at a periodic appraisal of the impact of appeals in the state. It's been five years since the World Bank unveiled the agro-processing, productivity enhancement, and livelihood improvement support appeals in six states across the country. Lagos is one of the beneficiaries of the project which seeks to develop agricultural value chains in rice, poultry, and aquaculture in the states. The aim of the project is to achieve sustainable development goal on zero hunger through collective responsibility to sustain agricultural productivity. On an average, our beneficiaries are getting two million, an average. It's a startup grant. So when you say a startup grant, you are looking at from beginning to the end to when they're able to sell. Apart from empowering more than 1,000 women and youths in agriculture with startup grants, the project has also paved the way for the emergence of 21 business alliances and two off-taker arrangements who are working with farmers to boost their productivity and turnovers. Formerly, what we've been experiencing, you can produce maybe, we can only boast of about some um, thousands of fishes. But now, I can tell you, in my own farm alone, I can boast of about 2 million pieces of fish per cycle. Before appeals came, we were not able to deliver uh, most of our orders. We, we went through a lot of training and that changed. They gave us a 15-ton um, cold room. The agro-processing Productivity Enhancement and Livelihood Improvement Support Project Appeals is expected to round off in March 2023 across the country. In Lagos, Musa Toliat, NTA News. And those are the stories making the rounds in Lagos at this time. But before we link up with Felicia in Joe's for reports from that zone, remember you can follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on YouTube at NTA News Online. You can also visit our Facebook page at NTA Network News, our Twitter handle, NTA News Now and on Instagram at NTA Network for updates. We'll take our first break. Nationwide will continue when we return. You're still watching Nationwide on NTA. The need for sustainable peace on the plateau for meaningful development came to the fore during the first Uruguay and Fulani Youth Summit in Jos. It was organized by Operation Safe Heaven as part of its commitment to enduring peace on the plateau. Elizabeth Ukai Andrew reports. 
The summit, which attracted participants from Basa local government area of the state, followed the need for enduring peace in the community for development to thrive. It is one of the series of intervention programs of Operation Safe Heaven. Papers on the need for lasting peace in the local government area, as well as the entire state, were delivered by resource persons who called for collaboration of stakeholders to achieve sustainable peace and development. Good to see a lot of uh, young people coming from the Fulani side and even the Irigwe side. And what we discuss here seems to be important. The promises they, they, they made in this place that uh, we are going to see a change and I believe that we are certainly going to see a change. It's a novel idea and a brilliant, a brilliant one too. The basic challenge we have now is healing is not as fast as destruction. The summit advised youths in the state to shun violence as key players emphasized need to engage youths in productive ventures that will make them self-reliant. In just Alisa Botukai Andrew, NTA News. A workshop on effective community policing has ended in JOS with a charge on participants to improve on the security apparatus of their communities and the states. Rotkang Dimka has details. The workshop, which had as its theme effective community policing, panacea to sustained internal security in Nigeria, featured a series of lectures on combating terrorism, crime, robbery and its prevention in the society, cultism and violence, among other issues of national security. This training equipped participants with strategies to protect their communities and the entire society. The community police is a, is a sharing of responsibility, it's a kind of proactive in the society concerning crime. It is expected that they will synergize with the police in order to see that they prevent their nefarious activities. We've discussed on issues of drugs, issues of uh, alcoholism, issues of relationship between the community and police. And all these things border on fighting the insecurity that we have in the society today. I'm also able to learn about drug abuse and how it has been destroying our youth. I'll go back to my ward and call the youth of my ward to tell them the danger of these illicit drinks. Stakeholders stress the need for all hands to be on deck to curtail the menace of crimes as the tax of securing the country should not be left for security agencies alone. And just Rotkan Dimka, NTA News. And that report wraps it from JOS. Najatu is back to you in Abuja. Thank you and welcome back to our Abuja studios. A high court sitting in Oshogbo has remanded the owner of Hilton Hotel Ilefe, Prince Adedoin Rahman and six others in Elisha in the Elisha Custodial Center till next hearing on Friday. Prince Rahman Adedoin and six others have been arraigned this Thursday before the high court over alleged involvement in the murder of Timothy Adegoki, a master's student at the Obafemi Awolowo University. Joshua Ugunjide reports that the defendants were previously arraigned before a federal high court in Abuja before the counsel to the family of the deceased Femi Falono requested the Inspector General of Police transfer the case to Oshun for hearing where the crime was committed. Meanwhile, the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice says it has received an extradition request in respect of Deputy Commissioner of Police Abba Kiari. In a statement by the Special Assistant to the Minister of Justice on Media and Public Relations, Omar Jibrilu Gwandu, the extradition is a process which involves multifaceted components, usually multi-territorial, international, local and judicial, adding that submission mission of such requests from the concerned party to relevant authorities constitutes one of such components. After thorough studies and reviews of issues regarding the application and components, the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice will process the application and forward same to relevant authorities for further necessary action. 
And as the lead agency in internal security management, the leadership of the Nigeria police is engaging strategic police managers to review the country's internal security architecture. Francis Form reports that the engagement also targets reevaluating strategies to enhance the performance of officers and men in the attainment of policing mandates. This meeting is reviewing the progress made with regards to the implementation of your communique and the ongoing operations across the country towards dislodging the criminal elements. Much as significant progress is being recorded, we must admit that we are not yet close to achieving our national security goal of restoring an internal security order. I wish to once again reassure the citizens of this great country of my commitment to the police reform project, as well as the assurances that I will continue to provide responsible and responsive leadership. The IGP says he's been inundated by complaints of excesses of some officers and men on stop and search patrol duties and warns that any personnel court will be decisively dealt with. I want to re-emphasize that while stop and search strategy could occasionally be an invaluable anti-crime tactic. Such should not be done without requisite approval and must not be a permanent strategy. With the recently signed into law, the 2022 Electoral Act, the IGP says the force is further challenged and assures that it will effectively dispense its roles, even as the activities leading to the 2022 general elections begin. In the meantime, Mary Etunde Aido has been decorated with her next rank by the IGP following her victory at the International Championship bout against the United Kingdom's Nora Penn. Francis is from NTA News. Thank you, Francis. We'll now join Adebola in our Ibadan Network Center for more reports on Nationwide. Atu, welcome to Ibado. The lingering fuel scarcity across the country has continued to take its toll on residents of Ibadan, the Oyo state capital. Ifelu Omoshule went round Ibadan Metro saw the situation and brought back this report, which is presented from our studio. Long queues, traffic jam, increase in fuel price, as well as hike in transport fare, characterize the situation on ground as fuel scarcity persists in Ibadan, leaving many with no option that to trek in order to cover some distances. I'm going to challenge. It was 100 Naira before, and now it's now 250, 300 Naira. Initially, we do pay 2,000 Naira for me to my destination. But now, when I go to this place, I had this 2,5. So I was even shocked. Increase in transport fare, according to the transporters, is inevitable if they are to remain in business as there is a decrease in patronage. Yesterday, I used five hours to queue just because I want to buy for 400 naira per litre and they will still collect for you. If you reach your town, if you don't pay 100 naira, they will not allow you to, to buy for it. Scarcity is, is getting too much for us because you see now, uh, from here to new guys, before we carry on 200 naira, now we're going to carry on 250, 300, which is not supposed to be. The situation is not different in some markets visited as traders and buyers express fears that the lingering scarcity might soon take its toll on the price of goods, if not quickly curtailed. Okay, the rise has caused one Congo is 1,000 to now. Later, it can become 1,005 because of the issue of transportation. They appealed to the relevant authorities to expedite action towards an end to the scarcity. Delay in the issuance of international passports in your state has now become a thing of the past. The controller of the Nigeria Immigration Service, and Suleiman, said this during his tour to some border areas in the state. Shola Wahid tells us more. As part of his duty to oversee activities of immigration officers under his command, the controller of Nigerian Immigration Service in Oyo State toured border areas to inspect facilities and personnel stationed at the border patrol bases of Isein, Igono, Aegun Asimi Control Post, and Shaki. He commended the officers for their diligence and commitment to duty. You do not harass people. Do not extort money from anybody. 
Your job is to guide as a good officer, be at a lot at all times. The NIS boss was at the palace of some traditional rulers where he appreciated their support uh, over the years. The federal government alone cannot provide all our needs. So as an assistant in needs of accommodation and some mobility for them to move out to the crannies to do their work. The issue of backlog on or before March ending will be 18 of the past. The talk, according to him, will be a continuous exercise to encourage officers in Ibadan Sholawahid, NTA News. And that's it from Ibadan. Nationwide continues with Suleiman in Kaduna after this break. Do stay with us. <laughs> in our Ibadan Network Center. Thanks for joining us here in Kaduna. The Jigao State Government has signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the National Agency for the Control of AIDS, NACA, to ensure effective response mechanism for health emergency situation that may arise in the states. Muhammad Askera reports that the collaboration will also be extended to poverty eradication among other developmental areas. Coronavirus pandemic has no doubt taken the world by surprise, a situation compounded by the weak health infrastructure and emergency response system. This development has stimulated governments at all levels to revisit the healthcare sector with the aim of providing injury infrastructure that can cater for the needs of the teaming population in the country. While signing the Memorandum of Understanding with the Jigao State Government, the Director General National Agency for the Control of AIDS, NACA, Dr. Aliu Gambogume, noted that Jigawa State is excelling in the provision of healthcare service delivery in the state, far above the recommendations of Abuja Declaration. Of this needs driven healthcare policy of the Badura administration has led to the provision of 287 primary healthcare centers across the state, in addition to the three specialist hospitals provided and 30 secondary healthcare facilities in the state. We want to support the State Minister of Health to make sure um, health insurance uptake at community level uh, improves significantly in Jigawa. We are also working with the same Minister of Health in health informatics system. We have consultants around um, that are working to improve quality of information that is transmitted from the grassroots to the ministry so that the ministry monitors what is happening at the grassroots and virtually all facilities within Jigawa State. Jigawa State, we have key into the policy of at least one primary health per ward so that care can reach to people at the hard to reach area. NACA has donated four ambulances to Jigao State Government to further boost the healthcare system. This is coming as the state government is training over 500 medical students home and abroad to strengthen the healthcare workforce in Jigao State. From Dutsi, Muhammad Askira, NTA News. And Kaduna State has help for quality ginger has been attracting interventions for ginger value chain. The idea is to ensure farmers produce high quality ginger to meet the standard of global commodity market. Amina Saido reports. Kaduna State, particularly southern Kaduna, has been producing ginger in large quantity, which is adjudged the best not only in the country but in the international commodity markets. We are working with stakeholders in the ginger balu chain, from palm to export, to make sure that uh, all the stakeholders from producers to processors to uh, um, agents and to exporters, all of them, they are trained. However, ginger farming remains subsistent on account of low standard of technical know-how and enough support among the farmers, resulting to poor yield. In addition to poor storage and processing, which affects the quality of ginger at global commodity markets. Addressing these identified problems is what brings about various intervention methods to assist farmers overcome the challenges. Johanna and Andrew Joseph have been into ginger production for more than three decades, but operate small-scale farming, and this intervention come to them as a surprise and will change their farming pattern. I'm seeing mechanized machines for me to improve my production. From the time my father trained me in farming ginger, I started developing myself, but the power is not much. However, a trained trainer workshop was put up in Kaduna under the National Policy and Strategy for Development of Ginger Value Change to develop a template to meet global standard in ginger production.
Amina Saidu, NT News. With that report by Amina Najatu, take it away from here. Thank you. The head of the civil service of the head of civil service of the Federation for Lashadi Yemieson says the graduation ceremony of the IG Public Leaders Program indicates transformation in the civil service. The leadership training is in partnership with the IG Mokwede Institute and the University of Oxford Blavatnik School of Government. Hamman Jabani reports. Deji is an NTA staff who has been with the organization for nine years and happens to be one of the 49 participants of the AIG Public Leaders Program, whose project, Harnessing Technology in Broadcasting, made the final five. By developing an app, mobile application, so that we can use it to broadcast our programs to the world, so that NTA can um, fulfill its mandate to reach the unreached. And the ultimate goal is to ensure that all entity stations have one app and then we have sub app under it so that each of entity stations that you want to watch, you just go and click. The Inogra program, which commenced in September 2021, offers peer to peer learning, a mixture of classroom discussion, simulations, practical exercises, and group work that are aimed at changing the mindset of participants who will, on the long run, transform the civil service while developing the new skill and perspectives to take on top leadership role. The program aims to deliver on the Ike Mokwede Foundation belief that if adequate investment is channeled into building the capabilities and effectiveness of the public servants in Nigeria and indeed Africa, we will close the gap between Africa and the rest of the world. Civil service must wake up and rise to take the rightful position because it's like everybody is waiting for the civil servants but we don't understand that you are supposed to think for the politicians by definition i'm not saying all politicians don't think but we expect more brains in the civil service than in politics the second batch that will produce the likes of Idowu is ongoing to involve 100 participants from nigeria and other african countries Hamman jabani nta news the protection of women's rights topped the agenda at the Nigeria-China Women's Meeting in commemoration of the 2022 International Women's Day. Elizabeth Omori reports that the First Lady Aisha Buhari in her message to the gathering advocated sustenance of conver conversations rather on gender equality, education and empowerment of women across board. The current global security context with many emerging threats call for the protection of women and girls. To Efforts go. to implement women-friendly policies we'll is win. the Our essence of this interracial meeting. First Lady of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, in a message to the women, posits that inclusion of women of in policy making and, and economic empowerment around. will foster tremendous development. The theme of this year's celebration signifies the role of women as mothers, sisters, and daughters in engineering sustainable development. Their role cannot be effectively executed without promoting partnerships. Human rights activists say gender gap in economic participation should be addressed for women to thrive in all spheres. The protection of women's equal rights in employment, personal property, marriage, and family still faces practical difficulties. The meeting featured cultural displays, music, and arts. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori in the National Institute for Cultural Orientation, NICO, is strengthening the cultural and rural foundation of Nigerian students by inaugurating cultural clubs in secondary schools. At the inauguration ceremony of one of the clubs at the Anglican Girls Grammar School, Abuja, the Director General of NICO, Ado Muhammad Yahuza, said besides stimulating the students' cultural consciousness and creativity, the cultural club will serve as a positive distraction from negative social vices for the students. You know, 
we're advancing different Nigerian cultural uh, heritage. And uh, we believe with the bombardment of uh, social media, virtually parents and school are losing, you know, to social media, the, the cultural upbringing of their, their, their words. We believe these clubs, you know, will be able to train and then bring out those things that are gradually getting out of hand. The principal of the school, Ngozi Ozibo, and the students welcomed the development, describing it as timely and relevant. To strengthen interagency collaboration, which is the new thinking among the Nigerian security agencies, the Nigeria Customs Service Kebi State Command has handed over seized drugs worth millions of naira to the NDLEA for further action. Ibrahim Langhamidu reports. So, further investigation and all necessary actions to bring these people to justice. Joseph Atta, Customs Area Controller, KB Command, said the aggressive patrol strategy that resulted to the seizure along Kamba Bunza Road was aimed at stopping criminality in whatever form, hence the need for interagency cooperation. 723 parcels of cannabis sativa to the commander, National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, KB State Command in the spirit of interagency collaboration. KB State Commander of the NDLEA, Peter Oche Odaudu, said the network of couriers who traffic illicit drugs is now effectively checked with the collaborative effort of the two agencies. And there are two levels of couriers. They are the international couriers who bring in some of this stuff from across the border in the Benin Republic. And then there are also internal couriers who ensure that these drugs get to their various destinations within and even outside the state. So the NDLA is not uh, unaware of this, and we are not uh, relenting. Apart from the drugs seized, other contrabands worth millions of naira in form of petroleum products were also intercepted. In Brunin Kebi, Ibrahim Danhamidu, NTA News. Sports update is next. Sports update concludes nationwide. Do remember to keep supporting NTA's campaign against rape and rapists to be a star. I'm Naja Atutijani. Thanks for watching.